Let us all please stand. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth be silent before him. We've come this far by faith. church we've come this far we've come this far by faith leaning leaning on the lord trusting in his holy trusting in his holy lord he never fails he never fails me yet We've come this far by, let's sing that again, please. We've come this far. We've come this far by, leaning on the Lord, leaning on the Lord, trusting, trusting in his holy word. He never fails us. He never fails. this far don't be discouraged don't be discouraged when troubles in your life he'll bear your burden and move on miser that's why that's why we've come Just the other day, just the other day, I heard someone say he didn't believe in God's word. But I can truly say, but can I made a way? He's never a fail. All over the church, we've come by. Trusting, trusting in his holy word. He never fails, he never fails me yet. Oh, 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 oh. turn around, we come this far by your hands, O ye people. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands, O ye people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Yeah. Do I have any victorious people in the house on this morning yeah. that know we come this far by faith? Amen. Yeah. Amen. I greet all of you in the joy of the one who brings joy like none other. The one who is my joy in my Amen. Amen. I am Reverend Herbert Brisbane, your university chaplain here at Dillard University. Here we acknowledge that this is the Lawless Chapel, but one of the things that we love and we welcome you to be a part of the experience, this is the Lawless Experience. And let me explain the Lawless Experience to you. It's a place where God is not always in a box, but he's also outside the box. He's a God that can be talked about, but most importantly, he's a God, or she's a God, that can be experienced also, amen? And so when we begin to put 
the parameters in God's hand, we thank God that God proved God's self every time. And so we welcome you here at Lawless Chapel on behalf of Dillard University, this very proud institution of the United Methodist Church. It brings me much joy to open our chapel to one of our very own. Come on and give God some praise, amen. One of the first among first. And so on this occasion of your installation as the 11th Bishop of the Louisiana Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church, but most importantly, the first black woman to be ordained bishop, recognized as bishop, amen? First of first. In, in addition to our commitment to cultivate leaders who live ethnically, think and communicate precisely and act courageously to make the world a better place, we thank you, Bishop D. Amen. We thank you for allowing us to be a part of the first, since we are the first and the oldest HBCU in the state of Louisiana. Come on now, first among first. And we bleed blue over here, amen. <laughs> So I, I welcome you, and for those of you that may need um, biological breaks, the restrooms are located in the back. We know it's early in the morning, the coffee breaks are real. And so that's a part of our welcome, amen? So that our house becomes your house. But like Dr. Martin Luther King, he spoke here exactly where Dr. Dr. Bishop is standing. And so we're just excited to be a part of this great moment. Our very fine um, Reverend, I tease her and call her Reverend Doctor also, but um, Dr. Rochelle L. Ford, who is our eighth president, expre expressed her greetings to you and her um, wanted me to share her hurt because she couldn't be here. She's in the air on her way to Japan with a group of students right now. Yeah. And so we want to continue to keep them in our prayers as they return. But I'm confident that under Bishop Williamson's leadership, as we move forward, we will be inspired to commit to a life of service, not just any kind of service, but service to God and to provide justice to our brothers and our sisters and to those in our community that we've been called to serve in collaboration, amen, in partnership with the God who reminds us that we are all a part of this plan. And so as we take just a moment, let us be in an attitude of prayer. The grace of the Lord, Jesus Christ, be with you. Let us pray. You may be seated. Also at this time, I've been tasked with the, um, the assignment of sharing resolu resolutions that had been given, and one in which I am honored to read on behalf of our President Rochelle Ford, um, Dr. Rochelle Ford, the Board of Trustees and alum, faculty and staff and students. We come providing you just with words of encouragement and just grateful and a grateful attitude of being able to bear witness of what God is doing. So in honor and a celebration of her historic installation as the first African-American bishop and the first African-American female to be installed as the 11th bishop in South Central Jurisdiction of the United Methodist Church, whereas Reverend Dolores J. Williamston, as a highly motivated and successful student, matriculated at Manhattan Christian College and graduated with a bachelor's degree in 2000. And whereas Reverend Dolores J. Williamston, seeking to extend her knowledge specializing in evangelism and black church ministries, received her Master's of Divinity from St. Paul School of Theology in 2007. Whereas Reverend Delois J. Williamson was ordained an elder in June of 2010 in the former Kansas East Conference, which later became the Greater Plains Conference. Whereas Reverend Delores J. Williamson, through her hard work and perseverance, her num numerous accomplishments and awards over the course of her 
profound and professional career. As such, will be com um, com she has completed her doctoral studies at Phillips Theological Seminary as of yesterday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Whereas these important feats of leadership have been of great benefit to the United Methodist Church, Council of Bishops, and the entire regional and national theological practice. Therefore, be it proclaimed that Dillard University recognizes the excellence, the achievements of a distinguished Reverend Dolores J. Williamson, Dr. Reverend Dolores J. Williamson, and her many years of service to the field of theology in the city of New Orleans and the present. Um, so we present this to you on the fourth day of March, 2023. Blessings. There's also a proclamation that's being presented by the City Council of New Orleans. Whereas the, the city of New Orleans is renowned for its food, festivals, famous citizens, and foreign visitors, and whereas the city council takes great pride in paying tribute to events and activities, now therefore be it proclaimed by the city of New Orleans that the council recognize Bishop Dolores J. D. Williamston. Co um, congratulations on your achievement as the first African American female bishop to the Louisiana in the United Methodist Church in the name of and by the author vested in the council of the city of New Orleans in a host of names. Amen. Amen. Let us all, let us all stand for the black national anthem, lift every voice and sing.
Good morning. So I have the privilege of formally, formally presenting the woman of the hour. Uh, but before I do, there are several special guests that we need to acknowledge. And so I want to extend a special welcome on behalf of the Louisiana Annual Conference. First of all, to the Right Reverend Shannon Rogers Duckworth, who is the Bishop of the Episcopal Diocese of Louisiana, and to her husband, James. And Bishop, we celebrate your historic installation as well. Also, we have with us the Reverend Lee Rochelle, who is the director of the Louisiana Interfaith Federation. Uh, Bishop Williamston has several family members here. Her aunt, uh, Annabelle Birch. <laughs> Her niece, Sabrina Birch. <laughs> Her soul sister, Sandra Beverly. And then her soul brother and sister, Reverend Natasha Murray and Reverend Mark Norman. And Bishop, I also have a greeting for you from Reverend Dawn Hand, who is the national president of the United Methodist Black Clergy Women. And she says, greetings. Uh, we thank God for you and for all of our sisters who have been called to Episcopal servant leadership for such a time as this. Please know that we will continue to hold you in prayer. Bishop Williamston, you have been consecrated to be a shepherd and servant and you have now been assigned as Bishop of the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. As chair, that, if somebody wants to clap, let's go. <laughs> as chair of the General Conference Delegation and member of the South Central Jurisdiction Committee on the Episcopacy, I do hereby certify that Dolores J. Williamston was duly elected a Bishop of the United Methodist Church at the 2022 Jurisdictional Conference. And I gotta say, and just to make sure you all know, she wasn't just elected, she was like elected. <laughs> Uh, and has been duly assigned by the South Central Jurisdiction Committee on the Episcopacy to the Louisiana Conference. Yes. I therefore present to this body, Reverend Dr. Bishop <laughs> Dolores J. Williamston. <laughs> And, and Bishop, we welcome you to this Episcopal area to which you have been assigned. And uh, I do think you're, yeah, go ahead and stand up. <laughs> and will you join me in this welcome? We welcome you as our Chief Shepherd and Episcopal leader. We pledge to listen to your voice, follow where you lead us, give God, praise to God, and let every word of our worship be offered with one accord. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. We, we have so much to praise God for. So if you know this next song, we want you to help us sing it. Every praise is to our God.
invite you to unite your voices once again with the prayer of illumination found in your bulletin. Let us say together. Guide us, O God, by your word and spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover your peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture lesson this morning comes from Titus, the first chapter, verses 7 through 9. For a bishop, as God's steward, must be blameless. She must not be arrogant or quick-tempered or addicted to wine or violent or greedy for gain. But she must be hospitable, a lover of goodness, self-controlled, upright, devout, and restrained, holding tightly to the trustworthy word of the teaching so that she may be able both to exhort with the sound instruction and to refute those who contradict it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bishop has been ordained to the ministry of the word and sacrament and to represent Christ's servanthood in a special ministry of oversight. church. The bishop is called to preach and teach the truth of the gospel to all God's people, to lead the people in worship, in the celebration of the sacraments, and in their mission of witness and service in the world, and by doing so, participate in the gospel command to make disciples of all nations. The bishop is to lead and guide all persons entrusted to her supervision join in the consecration of bishops, commissioned provisional members, ordained deacons and elders, commissioned deaconesses, home missioners, and missionaries for service to the church and to the world, and provide for the ministry of word and sacrament and the congregations committed to her care. Let the shepherd who has been called now affirm in our midst and let us respond to her affirmations. With God's help, I promise faithfully to hear and to proclaim God's word and rightly administer the sacraments as your pastor and servant. grace of Christ, I promise to be among you as a teacher of faith, a pastor of souls, and a means to the unity of the body of Christ. In the power of the Holy Spirit, I promise to be for you a means of reconciliation and healing, that all those who are burdened or oppressed may be made whole and able to rejoice in the new life in Jesus Christ.
representatives of the people of God, your people now come to present signs of the Episcopal office to you. As each is received and placed on the altar, we invite you all to respond with amen. Bishop Williamston, take this pastoral staff and be upheld and sustained by Christ, the Good Shepherd, as you exercise the ministry of a shepherd among us in Christ's name. Amen. Bishop Williamston, take this Bible and proclaim fearlessly the prophetic word in the cause of justice and peace for all people. Amen. Amen. Bishop Williamston, take this font. Be renewed in your baptism and renew us in ours. Amen. Amen. Bishop Williamston, take this bread and cup and keep us in communion with Christ and Christ Church. Amen. Amen. Bishop Williamston, take this towel and basin and be among us as one who serves. Amen. Amen. Bishop Williamston, take this stole and be our pastor, preacher, and teacher. Encourage and support all baptized people in their gifts and ministries, and pray for them without ceasing. Amen. Amen. Bishop Williamston, take this book of discipline. Guard the faith. Seek the unity exercise the discipline of the whole church, and supervise the church's life, work, and mission throughout the world. Amen. Bishop Williamston, take this gavel and preside in our annual conference. <laughs> Appoint pastors to, to their ministries and guide us in our common mission of love and justice witness and service. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Bishop Williamston, these are the signs of your ministry among the people of the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. Faithfully administer discipline, but do not forget mercy that when the chief shepherd shall appear, you may receive the never-fading crown of glory. In the name of Jesus Christ, the head of the church, I gladly assume with you and among you this ministry of word, sacrament, and order, of pastoral supervision, government, and service, strengthened by the love of God and the remembrance of my consecration to the episcopacy. I am resolved, I am resolved to serve faithfully and well the congregations, the people of the Louisiana Conference as bishop, pastor, and friend. On behalf of the congregation and people of the Louisiana Conference, we receive you, Bishop Dolores J. Williamson, with joy and thanksgiving as our bishop and pastor. We pledge to you our our support as you lead us in the ministry of reconciliation entrusted to us all. Hear now these words from Ezekiel. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As shepherds seek out their flocks when they are among their scattered sheep, so I will seek out my sheep. 
I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them unto their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the water courses, and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, but the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. Amen. 
Our gospel lesson today is from John's gospel, the 21st chapter. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. The gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Precious Lord, take my hand. Precious.
I need a Kleenex. <laughs> Somebody have a tissue. Yes. Yes, I do. Wow. Wow. Give me a moment. time and we are here we are here in a historic moment in a historic place to celebrate a historic event we are here as the Louisiana annual conference of the United Methodist Church to celebrate what God has done the first black woman elected to the Episcopacy in the South Central jurisdiction and the first woman to serve, black woman to serve as a bishop in the Louisiana Conference. And I am humbled to be the first. And I know I stand on your shoulders, Reverend Cheryl Bell and Reverend M Michelle Michael Sue. You too opened the door for me to hope and dream and I am forever thankful. And I am thankful that now I am Sergeant First Class, <laughs> Bishop Reverend Dr. Dolores J. Williamson. people here to thank today. Dillard University, thank you. Campus Minister, thank you so much. Professor Davenport and the young folks that are here in this amazing choir for making this event possible at Dillard University. And young folks, I'm praying for you that you will get additional, additional credit for your participation in this event today. Amen. Amen. Ecumenical guests and bishops from across the UM denomination, the Great Plains uh, delegation members who are also my family, Rando, Eduardo, Karen, Oliver, Reverend Cheryl Bell, uh, David Livingston and Holly Tapley all came from the Great Plains Conference, Kansas and Nebraska to be with us here today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. You are my family. You are my family. The, the Louisiana delegation members who met me in 2020, and look what God done did. <laughs> the Jurisdictional Episcopal Committee, uh, Carolyn Dove and Reverend Andy Goff, when they brought me those Mardi Gras beads in November on the 3rd, uh, it was the greatest way to tell me, you going to Louisiana. <laughs> And I am excited to be here. I am excited. I want to thank you to the conference staff, the assistant to the bishop, Reverend Dr. Van Stinson and Reverend Allie Young and the district superintendents, uh, Tom Doff, Jan Kerwick, Carly Pigeon and Scott Bullock and the newcomer, Francie Hooten. Thank you, thank you. Thank you to Sandy and Teresa and, and Jewel and Michelle and Rhonda and Kyle. And thank you to little Miss Grace, the canine corgi, who will meet you at the door. Amen. And thank you, Todd Rossnagel and William Willerby in communications. And to my executive assistant, Catherine Moore, who keeps me on point tracking meetings and calendaring, calendaring and paperwork and even wrang wrangling in Odin, the canine shih tzu. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Southern hospitality is a real thing in Louisiana. It's a real thing. Thank you to the planning team for this installation service, for getting things together, and those who assisted and helped make the day what it will be. I have been in Louisiana, in the Louisiana Conference now, for a whole 63 days, but who's counting? <laughs> 
thank you to my family. My son and wife and my grandchildren were unable to attend. My brother was unable to attend, but as you heard, my, my aunt Annabelle and my cousin Sabrina and my soul sister Sandy Beverly and my soul brother and sister Mark and Natasha Norman and to my home church, Asbury Mount Olive United Methodist Church in Topeka, Kansas. No one knew that that child, me, who ran from Sunday school to go home and watch cartoons, <laughs> who got in trouble jumping from roofs off the garages, who was often found sitting on the steps of Reverend Logan's house waiting for my mother to come home because I had gotten in trouble. <laughs> no one knew I'd come this far, and yet here I stand, coming this far by faith. By faith. And lastly, to that great cloud of witnesses who I can see no more, my parents who now rest in God's presence, my dad, Oscar, who showed me how a father loves his children and his wife, and my mama, Henrietta, who loved me through the toughest moments and celebrated with me in the highest moments of joy. And thank you, Holly Tapley. I know my mama and my dad are still my biggest fans in that great cloud of witnesses. I know they are proud of me. I know they are. And I will forever be my mama to my mama, the brat. <laughs> and to my great, great, my great aunt Evelyn, who lived to be 105 years old, she said to me one day when we were down home on the farm, she said, Dolores, in this life, in this world, you gotta have some gumption to live in this great big world. And so Aunt Evelyn, I have your gumption to be in this great big old world. God has done a marvelous thing. Praise the Lord and amen. Today in this moment, I'd like to share with you uh, a title of a book, that I have been fascinated with uh, for some years now. It's called The Times Were Strange and Steering, Methodist Preachers and the Crisis of Emancipation by Reginald Hildebrand. Though the book is about the history of the AME and the CME and the Methodist Episcopal Church North and South, Hildebrand's book provides a historical perspective of black Methodists in the United States before, during, and after the Reconstruction period. The history is quite interesting that he pro provides in the book. However, it's the title of the book that fascinates me. The times were strange and stirring. This phrase, phrase intrigues my mind and calls my attention to the challenges of the times that we are living in right now. And I find myself thinking about our world politically and socially, and it feels like things are going backward, rolling back in time. And on a recent Zoom program for Black History Month, Clara Esther, an eyewitness to the assassination of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who also stood, y'all, in this pulpit on May 31st of 1959, preaching the baccalaureate service, Clara said that, that the times and, and history is repeating itself, and we are nearly back where we began with Emmett Till and the Civil Rights moment, Movement. The times are strange and stirring and, 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 and challenging, but we should not be surprised, right? Even when we look back to the images and narratives of God's people, the times before, during, and after the Babylonian captivity, the times were strange and stirring. In Ezekiel 34, remember, God saw all that was going on, and God saw those who were in charge over his flocks and were not tending to the needs of God's flock in Ezekiel 34, 1 through 10. In those verses, God is, is addressing the practices of those leaders, shepherds, kings, and politicians who were only keeping the flock for their own gain, doing only what they wanted, however they wanted, at the expense of the sheep. And the sheep were scattered, wounded, and led astray, hungry and thirsty, and suffered injustice at the hands of those who were to care for them. 
Yet in Ezekiel 34, 11 through 16, God decide, decides that God would become the shepherd of God's own sheep and will seek the lost and bring back the stray and bind up the injured and the wounded and feed the hungry and the thirsty and strengthen the weak and deal with those who created injustice with justice, thus giving the sheep who are lost and scattered or led astray, hungry and thirsty, wounded or injured, a vision of hope. Hope for the future in strange and stirring times. Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church, the times are strange and stirring, challenging. But I believe God is calling on shepherds of hope. God is calling his servants, a remnant, to stand up and speak up for many are scattered, lost, hurting, hungry, and in need of justice. God, the good shepherd, who sent his son, Jesus, the good shepherd, who laid down his life for the sheep, calls us and sends us to follow Jesus as shepherds of hope. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11:1, 1, follow me as I follow Christ, the good shepherd. The good shepherd sends shepherds of hope who are concerned for the sheep that they are not led astray and that they are fed and given everlasting waters and that their wounds and injuries be bound and healed and that they are given justice. Y'all, there is work to do as disciples of Jesus Christ because the great shepherd is watching, the good shepherd is calling and sending shepherds of hope in this strange and stirring times out into the mission field to offer hope. You know, this past January, I was moved to hear these words by, uh, from Dr. James Sally. He's the president and CEO of Africa University in Tennessee. I was moved when he said that Africa University is a school of dreams in a valley of hope. And I thought, hmm, we are to be churches of dreams in the valley of hope a conference of dreams in Louisiana in a valley of hope. We are United Methodists filled with dreams in a valley of hope. We are filled right with dreams in a valley of hope in our communities, towns, and cities. We are ministries of dreams in a valley of hope, even in places where a United Methodist Church may lo no longer be present because there are still people there, and that is hope. We are a diverse people with big dreams in the Louisiana Conference. Despite conflicts of disaffiliation and churches closing in some rural places, and yet we are in a valley of opportunity and hope. And God is with us. God is with us. Hey, y'all, I, I believe we are poised for revival. We can be a movement again by the power of the Holy Spirit. God has summoned us, God has summoned me to be a shepherd of hope in these strange and stirring times. Where there are children to baptize, families who are homeless or unhoused, there are those with different abilities in need of a lift. There are children who are left behind educationally in our conference in need of assistance to learn to read and write and do arithmetic and be social. There are educators and, and medical personnel, personnel and civic workers, to name a few, who are in need of our vision and our support. There are those outside the church locked out of the halls of equity and equality. There are lingering effects of COVID to deal with, and gun violence continues to rise. There are those who are addicted and jobless. There are those still dealing with the effects of the storms, because the storm always is, named and forever present. The storm never goes away. And there are those who stand with their backs against the wall in the words of Howard Thurman, yet what does the gospel of Jesus Christ require us to do, or what are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? Overall, y'all, we, we need to refocus on the mission field as the people answering a call 
because there are people answering a call into vocation, vocational ministry in the United Methodist Church. And there are United Methodist clergy and pastors who are pastoring their flocks to help youth and children learn about God in Sunday school and confirmation classes and such. There are ministries happening here in Louisiana, in the Louisiana Conference. People are joining churches who have not been a part of a church before in rural places. Evangelism is happening at blood drives. There are new expressions of church like Mid-City and St. Mark's in New Orleans engages the homeless and St. John's and Broadmoor and EMS, United Methodist Church, feed the hungry. And there is common ground in the Dulac Community Center and Sager Brown, and there's so much more happening. There are clergy and laity reaching you through interactive applications, and there are laity meeting in desert places coming together to strategize and work together to build up the laity in the area. There are students in campus ministries leading students to discern a call into ministry, and hey, I'm just here to tell you that there's just so much more to do, and when I, when I, I and to think about, and and there's so much more to focus on and to inspire while we have the time, for tomorrow is not promised to any one of us in here. And as my sister says to me, who's sitting in here today, I have more time behind me than I do in front. What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do with that? We, the Louisiana Conference, are a boot-shaped state that can be a boots-on-the-ground movement by the power of the Holy Spirit. As we focus on discipleship and disciple-making instead of disaffiliation-making, period. 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 Yes, we are living in some strange and stirring times, but it's God's time, Kairos time. And it is an opportunity to put hope in action and move forward for a better and brighter future together as the United Methodist Church. You see, hope does not just sit around talking about hope. Hope is a call to action. One writer, Ron Carucci, writes in his book called uh, To Be Honest, he says that hope is the glue that bridges the gap. And hope has three parts. First part is hope has passion, the desire for something greater. The second part, hope has perseverance, the need to prevail against great odds. And third, hope has faith, that is, the belief that there is something greater beyond the odds. As an organization or a nation is facing its gloomiest days, hope is what gets us through. Or as uh, Reverend Dr. Emily Town says about hope, hope resides in the dark. You keep watching, you keep waiting, you keep working, but you don't ever give up. You don't ever give up. You don't ever give up on hope. God, our great shepherd, you see, sent his son, Jesus, the good shepherd, who is sending shepherds of hope in the United Methodist Church to serve. And I'm here as a shepherd of hope to serve God through the United Methodist Church with my whole heart, my mind, and my soul, and my life. I am summoned to follow Christ Jesus who leads me to lead God's people, the sheep in the Louisiana Conference, and to fight for no sheep left behind. No sheep left behind. You get it? No sheep left behind. I am here as a shepherd of hope to serve in the Louisiana Conference who has, who has dreams in a valley of hope. Are we ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Are we ready to get back on point and focus on making disciples yes. in Monroe and, and Alexandria and Lake Charles and Lafayette? <laughs> In Baton Rouge and, and New Orleans, on the North Shore to Manny, to St. Francisville, to Thibodeau, <laughs> and, and 
Natchitoches, did I get it right? <laughs> Natchitoches, and everywhere in between. <laughs> Are we ready to go out into God's mission field, to gather the scattered, to find the lost, to provide good pasture and fresh water, to bind up the wounds of the injured, and lead the way to justice? You know, I really do care, and I am here to lead the church in the mission field as a shepherd of hope in the denomination I love called the United Methodist Church to make a difference while I have the time. Again, tomorrow is not promised. Are you ready? Yes. Are we ready? Yes. Let's go and let's get it. As you say, laissez les bon temps rouler. Laissez les bon temps rouler. Laissez les bon temps rouler. Laissez les bon temps rouler, brother. Laissez les bon temps rouler. That is, and I translate, right? Let the good times roll. As we march forward, to make disciples of Jesus Christ in the Louisiana Conference to transform our neighborhoods, our communities, our town, our city, our state, our conference, our denomination, the world. Let's start here in Louisiana as a boots on the ground movement to make disciples for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you. Let us lift our voices in prayer. O oh God, shepherd and ruler of the faithful, look with favor on your servant Dolores, whom your church has appointed bishop and chief pastor of the Louisiana area. Grant that by word and example, she may assist those among whom she is placed so that she and the people entrusted to her care may fulfill the promises that they have made this day, grow together in unity, love, and service, and at last obtain everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're marching to Zion. the church come we come we have and let our joys be known join in the song with sweet accord join in the song with I'm the surround that throne and the surround we're marching we're marching to Zion Beautiful, beautiful Zion, we're marching upward to Zion. Verse 2, the sorrows, the sorrows of the mind be Religion never... to Zion. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching up We're marching to Zion. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful, beautiful Zion. We're marching up what to Zion. The beautiful. One more. 
one more time, we're marching. We're marching to Zion. Beautiful. We're marching upward to Zion. That beautiful city of May we go in God's mission field and make disciples of Jesus Christ and refocus our energy on what God has called us to do, and that's to be a presence and a witness in God's world of God's amazing love and God's amazing grace. Be blessed and go into your communities and let us go together making disciples of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.